What's up Genshin Impact players? I have some super exciting news. The banners for 2.8 were just dropped by Hoyoverse over on the Genshin Impact official page, but also in game. And there's some really exciting stuff to look at. So I wanna go over with you what's good about these banners, what you should maybe avoid, and whether or not they're worth pulling on for you, especially as a newer player. Because let's be honest, if you're an older player, these videos aren't like super helpful for you. Maybe you just enjoy watching like me talk at a camera or something, I'm not really sure. But let's take a look. Go over to notices in game. You go over here to event, event wish, leaves in the wind. So as you can see, right off the bat, we have Kazuha, Heizo, Toma, and Ningguang on the banner. Now our boy Kazuha, I already made some videos on him, but uh, in my opinion, he is the best five star in the game currently. There's a lot of really powerful, amazing support five stars, but this character has been a sort of timeless, sort of unnerfable character, no matter what the, the enemies they make are so far. And I don't think Oivers is going to implement anything that's going to change that. I think Kazuha is going to stay a good unit even in Sumeru because let's be honest even if Animo doesn't work with Dendro it's not like you're gonna only run Dendro and Animo teams together you're gonna probably be running other elemental damage dealers like Electro or Pyro and those reacting with Dendro will still mean that Kazuha can find some use in some way so realistically I think that Kazuha is gonna stand the test of time no matter what I think he's a solid unit and him being up next in this banner is just super exciting especially if you're a newer player I cannot stress this enough if this is a character you're interested in or if you want want to play Kazuha at all, you should pull for him. But then you, if you want to just talk about four star value, this banner is actually good. So let, let me talk about kind of why this is good. There's a weapon banner we're going to look at too in a second, but just looking at like Heizo, Toma, and Ningguang, right? So Heizo is a character that we have seen a little bit of, and based on what we know about him already, not basing it off of leaks or anything, just what Hollyverse has shown us, there's basically no way for Heizo to be bad. The best way you can explain this is that Sucrose, even if Sucrose did like zero damage, she would still be good because you have this artifact set veered as inventor that's able to debuff enemy resistances when you swirl an element and any animo character can use that and so as a result all animo characters can fit into some team in some way there's not an animo character that doesn't fit anywhere even animo traveler can be used but with Hazo and sucrose in particular they are both catalyst users which means that they can both wield the book thrilling tales of dragon slayers so if you don't know that book is basically just a weapon that gives you a huge attack buff on the next character you switch to after the catalyst user and so i guess the point is that even if Hazo did zero damage at all, even if his kit completely sucked and there was no valuable effects at all, he could still wield Thrilling Tails and he could still be a debuffer. So there's no way for Hazo to be bad. But we may see that Hazo actually does decent damage. Um, overall, I think that him just being an Animo Catalyst user makes him worth pulling for in the first place. However, if you don't want Kazuha, there's very few of you who don't, but if you don't want Kazuha, then I wouldn't say to risk it for Hazo. Uh, especially if you have Sucrose, then you don't necessarily need him. But if you don't have Sucrose, Hazo is a good shoe in for the same slot, essentially. The only difference is that Sucrose has some grouping utilities and it doesn't look like Hazo does, or at least not as effective of ones as Sucrose. So there is that to consider. But overall, I think Hazo is going to be good. And then as far as this middle character, um, right now, Toma doesn't seem to be super useful. The main problem is that he only fits into like two comps optimally, right? If you're trying to optimize your damage. He can only be run in like double hydro Hu Tao to, to make sure that you don't steal vaporizes from Hu Tao or in like a Yoimiya team where enemies are already kind of far away. Because the thing is, you don't want him to steal your vaporizes, your melts and your other reactions from your other characters. It's really important that the, your main DPS are the ones dealing the damage. So that way they get their damage multiplied. So that's the short of it. Toma right now doesn't fit into any like super meta teams. However, I don't think that's going to always be the case. First off, his constellations aren't too bad. A C6 gives you a bunch of damage bonus. I, I believe it's a C6. Wait, hold on, we can check. Don't want to say the wrong thing here. Go down to C6. Uh, okay, yeah. Whenever it's refreshed, the damage dealt by all party members, normal charged and plunging attacks is increased by 15% for six seconds. So yeah, he increases all of your, uh, your normal charged and plunging attack damage at C6. So if you are close to C6, then he becomes a little bit better even. But right now he doesn't really have a spot. I think when Dendro comes out and we take advantage of burning more often, then we may see that like, okay, Toma is like a much better unit now because being able to apply that pyro to dendro and create that two unit gauge of burning that's reapplying itself makes toma a better pyro applier than before just because you know the existence of dendro will buff a lot of other elements so i think that toma could be good in the future right now i'm, I'm gonna keep it straight with you he's not super good but then you also have ningguang so ningguang the, the reason that ningguang is good is like first off 
She's a good damage dealer. Uh, she buffs Geo with her, her Jade Shield, and she's a Catalyst user, so worst case scenario, you can give her Prototype Amber to heal, or you can give her Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. You can do one of those things, right? So she's already, like, pretty good, but on top of that, she's just rare. Like, we haven't had Ningguang on a lot of banners yet, and so her being on this character banner is actually pretty good, especially because Kanzo is going to be such a highly desired character. Putting both Hazo and Ningguang on this banner is a pretty solid thing. There's going to be plenty of people in the comments who, who have C6 Ningguang, but she has shown up a little bit less than some other characters in the Genshin cast, and so it's cool to see her coming back. She doesn't have any direct synergy with Kazuha, and honestly, I don't think Toma's synergy is that strong with Kazuha either. But let me completely real with you, I don't think any of these four stars are really meant to synergize with Kazuha, but two of them show a lot of promise, and one of them could end up being good in the future. So overall, I actually think this is a good banner to pull on for newer players, especially if you don't have Sucrose, just for the four star value. But Kazuha himself is going to be the main draw to this banner, because he's just so freaking good, and it's really hard to undersell how good he is. So, and then obviously, like you have Klee banner as well. Klee's also another like pyro damage dealer that a lot of people are like, oh, Klee fell off. Klee's not that good. Klee's actually still really good. And it's just a matter of like, she's really clunky to play. Uh, not a lot of people like that play style, but she's she's pretty solid too. So if you're just looking for a pyro damage dealer, you don't really care about who tell that much. Klee is pretty good. Uh, you can't really go super wrong with Klee, especially if you have double hydro. Like if you have Yolan and Singshaw together, Klee's much better. All right. And once you look at the, oh, wait, this is actually, I actually haven't looked at this beforehand, by the way. So Freedom Sworn and Lost prayer and then i'm just surprised to see fischl's weapon here the thing with let's just take a look at these weapons so you have alley flash minnox waltz rain slasher phonies lance and wood Sith. so basically your freedom sworn is a good weapon um i just want to say like straight up it's going to give you uh attack bonus elemental mastery bonus and it's a really good weapon for kazuha but the thing is it's not like elegy for the end where it can be played on like five different bow characters and work just fine uh this weapon is not that flexible in comparison it, it's not a bad weapon at all but it's you're not going to have that same level flexibility as elegy so in my opinion that makes it a little bit lower on the totem pole and also on top of that you can just run favonius on kazuha so i don't think freedom sworn is a super necessary weapon but if you want it go ahead and pull for it obviously it will enhance your kazuha at the least assuming you have the energy requirements met now lost prayer is sort of interesting a lot of people don't really care for lost prayer it requires you to be out on the field and whenever you leave the field you lose its passive it does have crit rate as the main stat so there's that it makes it easier to build crit but in general things like wind Sith even can be more consistent than Lost Prayer uh, because you lose the Lost Prayer stacks when you switch out. So it's something to consider. Is it a bad weapon? Not really, but there's so many good options available at Catalyst that Lost Prayer may not be your best option all the time. So that's something we're thinking about. The Freedom Sworn is good. Lost Prayer, I definitely wouldn't recommend. Alley Flash is a, it's basically a Bennett weapon. You don't really use Alley Flash on anyone else. It's got an Elemental Mastery main stat, but the EM main stat is so small that you don't even really want to use it on Kazuha, but it has a really high base attack so that's super good for Bennett. So Alley Flash, if you happen to get Alley Flash, put it on your Bennett. Minnox Waltz is a official hybrid bow. I don't want to. I don't want to misinform you guys about any of this. I don't know exactly where this thing falls in Fischl's bow lineup, but I've heard that it's pretty good. Right. So just double check. Yeah. So its main stat is you're going to be your physical damage bonus. Uh, your elemental skill buffs your normal attacks. Your normal attacks buff your elemental skills. So it's a decent bow overall, especially re with refinements. It gets to be really strong. And for Fischl, it's it's a decent weapon. It'll look really good with the new skill into so there's that but would i recommend pulling on this banner for it probably not rain slasher claymore good on diluc and sayu that's basically it i guess you could put it on beto too but Pavonius lance is very good so pull arms in this game are very strong there's so many strong pull arm characters that Pavonius lance is a very valuable weapon to have because there's no sacrificial pull arm so you can use Pavonius lance on shenha you can use it on uh yunjin you can use it on emblem shangling you can use it on xiao even zhongli all of those characters can get a lot of value out of Pavonius lance and i definitely recommend having one but again don't pull on the banner for one with sith probably the best four star catalyst that you're gonna get uh it has the ability to buff you massively in your elemental mastery your damage bonus or your attack so uh it has a crit damage main stat awesome weapon super versatile uh probably even super good on hazo so that is another thing to consider but all in all i think that this what this banner has like a decent amount of, of like good weapons but i just can't really recommend rolling on it because again it's a weapon banner weapon banner is a scam and unless both the five stars are ones that you want it's kind of just not really a super good idea if you're like financially in like a good place and you plan on spending on it obviously for freedom sworn then the four stars are actually pretty good pickups but outside of that i wouldn't really recommend it so i guess overall like looking at these two character banners the the clean the kazuha banner the value you get of the kazuha banner is actually insane especially for new players who may not have these three star or these four star units these three four star units over there because two of these are going to be really solid
solid and one of them uh toma over here may be pretty good in the future with dendro i'm holding out hope for that one uh, and then obviously Klee's just like a good uh power damage dealer so you have that to think about uh in my opinion hu tao is still better but uh Klee's, Klee's definitely not bad by any means weapon banner just you know just avoid it at all costs unless you're you're wailing for freedom sworn i wouldn't risk just going to pity once on this thing uh you get lost prayer you're gonna be a sad boy compared to you know your freedom sworn so but anyways there's lots of other great stuff we get to look forward to in the 2.8 patch is coming up in a few days and i know a lot of you are super excited for kazaha you know what let me know down in the comments what you're rolling on if you're pulling on any of the banners this patch uh including yomiya banner which is coming up later on go ahead and let me down know down in the comments below thanks for watching everyone i can't wait to get some videos out for you guys on hazo and i'll catch you next time